for Reaper Metal Productions. You are listening to Hellcast Metal Podcast. And today I have a, have a special co-host. I have Tommy from All About the Rock, but he also, if you've heard him on the show before, he's from uh, the great record label uh, Redefining Darkness. So thanks for being here, Tommy. Happy to be here. And we have the definite pleasure of having a great guest on here, which we have to give a big shout out to All About the Rock in the UK for making this possible. And that is having Glenn Benton from Deicide on. So Thank you very much, Glenn, for taking time out of your You're day and welcome. doing this. You're welcome. Deicide has a new album out, Overtures of Blasphemy, and you get that now. There's a link in the description on this video. It's the modern day. You have no excuse to not hear this. One of the things that I kind of uh, slightly got excited about is the cover art. But it, in a way, and maybe because it's more the kind of the modern day, it doesn't have too much that offends people. Granted, I've been in the presence of wearing an Iron Maiden shirt, and someone's like, that's a scary shirt. And it's right. like, dude, you're a grown man, and you just told another grown man that a T-shirt is scary. <laughs> like, like, so have have you, like, in, in a widespread, like, have heard it where, like, people are, are still offended by DSI covers and stuff? or? Yeah, once upon the cross was the worst of them all, because <laughs> or the best, depending how you look at it. Yeah, I, well, it I mean, <laughs> as far as as far as like the complications, you know, um, the record company immediately after Trevor Brown turned that in, their record company was on my heels immediately, um, because the distributors that they all the distributors and chain stores, retail stores were, were all refusing to carry the record, so um, everybody started scrambling. They wanted to put it in a brown paper wrapper and all that so i came up i came up with the idea of like doing another piece of work with the sheet over it so right. that's how that all that's all that came about oh wow okay it worked that, out yeah. amazing yeah yeah well even kind of similarly with uh, serpents of the light there wasn't really a, a censored cover but they put that giant sticker over top of it right like the, the, the yeah i don't switch. understand why i, I yeah, don't understand why there was, yeah, yeah there, so oh so even as the guy that you know came up with like you really didn't get much of an explanation of what they were offended because, like, when I saw, it, I was like, "What are you really offended by?" Like, right. Jesus is, you know, he's he's cold, he's dead. I mean, is <laughs> well, that how the story goes? They, they, you got, you know, you got to keep in mind you have that Amy Grant crowd rolling through the store too. So, <laughs> fish, fish radio, whatever the hell. Is. Well, that's kind of what and spikes a little bit of my curiosity though too. Is I'm sure you've definitely noticed with today's modern age. That everybody has gotten really, really touchy and wimpy. Have you not? Uh, I yes, we have <laughs> become a society of soft underbellies for sure. Absolutely, hundred <laughs> percent. So has like kind of the offense, you know, around deicide or just death metal really in general. Has it really changed from back in the day? Because I really kind of think you know, deicide was definitely like the the really the band like probably at the forefront of the yeah. whole satanic panic. And that was just different though. And it was more, it was kind of even cooler because at least as a fan, it was like, Oh, cool. Like it's more indirectly like Atari and something where now it's like, everybody's just getting offended over every little every thing. Every little thing. There's like shit. I, it's just not even fun anymore, but like, has it caused you any like hardships be, because everyone's so damn touchy or. Well, I, I stopped doing press for a long time, man, because of the, uh, that, like I discussed earlier that you have people that in the press, they just want, they have nothing but nothing uh, of a, of a professional nature to add to their interview. So they immediately go in the gutter and then they drag you, they, you end up saying something in defense of yourself. And then the next thing you know, everybody's hating on you even more. So <laughs> I kind of just kind of, you know what the, the, the jabs at me personally and my family and stuff like that. I kind of just took, you know, I said, you know, I really could live without doing this. You know, I've been a, a deicide fan, you know, my whole, uh, you know, from being a teenager on, obviously when I discovered death metal, you guys were one of the first alongside cannibal corpse and some, you know, malevolent and kind of all the guys you, you came up with probably after serpents of the light, I stopped paying as much attention. Um, it seemed maybe with, some of maybe what was going on internally, I, I just didn't feel for me personally, the music was doing what it was, what it had done for me in the past. And again, it could have been like the turmoil that you were dealing with. But uh, moving forward, obviously, as, as Jack Owen and, and, and Ralph, uh, rest in peace, got involved, uh, things were obviously progressing and getting better. The one thing, though, that always kind of rubbed me funny, and I, I don't know how you feel about this, was um, the sense of melody that came into the band. Uh, 
when some of these other writers got involved, um, whether it was Ralph or uh, or Jack, and I, I don't know where it came from, but when, when the solos got kind of um, uber melodic, where in the past they had been a little bit more... Um, uh, kind of in that diminished scale realm and, and kind of sounding a little bit more uh, minor and evil. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, man. Ralph wrote, uh, Ralph wrote all those leads. Right. And just the, 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 the problem with that process was that the person doing the lead <clears throat> had to take 75 takes to put that lead together. Right. So um, it was very, you know, machined, you know, okay. and, and in regards to like the last couple records there with Deicide and Roadrunner records, you know what, everything lost its momentum or, you know what, everything, every, all the relationships there had all run their course. Right. So, that's that was at the tail end of all that shit coming to an end and that. So everything had run its course and um, you know, my creativity was squashed, you know, right. back in those days. So I mean there was a like I say, yeah, eternally, yeah, there was some things going on there. But yeah. um as far as the leads with Ralph, yeah, was Ralph a little more melodic than I wanted? Absolutely. But was he a phenomenal player? Fantastic I'm player, proud, yeah. Yeah, I'm proud to have Ralph played on our record. You know, he was but uh, like yeah, I say, uh, Steve wrote all that material. You oh, know, cool. Steve wrote, yeah, Steve wrote uh, just about all the scars. He wrote all the stench, um, till death. I mean, he wrote all of them records. You know, so the melodicness. Steve's uh, Steve's quite the sweet player himself, man. People don't know that, but he's quite the shredder himself. So. Yeah, we're learning it as I've learned that he's done a lot of this. Uh, yeah, I had no, I didn't I mean, really didn't know, know that. Yeah, a lot of people didn't know. Yeah, Steve that he was, was so yeah, involved in the, the writing process. And even you, Glenn, because you were kind of saying uh, in a previous interview, at least for uh, this latest album, that, you know, you were picking up the six strain and you were, uh, you know, even doing some writing and stuff and everybody was kind of going like, oh shit, Glenn's writing too. Like, we're, <laughs> you know, we really have yeah. kind of something exciting going on. And uh, you know, so one of the things though, I was kind of curious that I just found out the other day, I had really no idea, is, you know, DSI definitely previously, and, you know, it's kind of changed throughout uh, the course, it had a lot of layered vocals and stuff. But one of the things that you had mentioned, and I don't know if you remember or not, or but not that it really even mattered, that you were saying that you kind of had more uh, backward messages in there that people don't didn't entirely realize. And I wasn't, I was kind of, a looking for a little bit of clarification on what that meant because like is it like the whole you know Judas Priest thing where it was like you know you play it backward and no. says do, do it, it. <laughs> or do was it. it like yeah you you read the lyrics and like you can come up with a different message? <laughs> no. Well, for the new record, I just put a curse, a backwards curse, uh, intended for the individuals that I wrote the song about. Nice. Um, Which will remain nameless. And I tell people this too. I mean, I would you know, I mean. And so in my business, it's never good to uh, reverse a curse. Um, but uh, like I said, I, have I hidden things over the years in the high tracks and the mid track? You know, when I muddle all that shit together? Yeah, this record, I went with a little different approach, man. I didn't want to. Uh, the record is just when I listened to it, I didn't hear high screams all over the album. But when I play it live, I am doing high screams. So. Oh, cool. To touch on that, uh, we were just talking actually before the interview about your your vocal approach and how it kind of changed and evolved over the years. And obviously, some of that has to do with just be, you know growing up. You know, if you start at eighteen, obviously you're going to change over over time. But something that I really truly loved and that scared the hell out of me when I was young was you know listening to Dead by Dawn, for example, and all the multi layered vocals that you were doing and just like just those like growls that kind of carried out throughout that song, for example. I mean, it's like that fucking exorcist, man. It's like scary <laughs> as hell. Even to this day in headphones, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You know, and, and I know it sounds like some are pitched and this and that, and it's just so cool. Did you kind of move away from that because it was too hard to replicate live? And I, I know you guys were very no, much about no, like no. I can high everything stream, live. Yeah, I, there, there's three voices that I do um, outside of just their regular you know, straight forward vocal. And, uh, I have names for them. One of them I call the Cobra. Okay. Um, <laughs> the one, and it's funny. You mentioned the, uh, dead by dawn thing there. Cause, uh, the other voice I refer to it as grandma on the fruit cellar. And <laughs> Can, I you have several voices that I... Can you give us an so example? Can you give us an example of these? <laughs> Um, not without, you know, blowing us, blowing our ears. Oh up. yeah. I'll overwhelm your microphones. But, uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, I was apply. I apply those here and there when I I need to in that. So, um, 
but uh, I can actually hit my highs easier now than I could 20 years ago. So oh, cool. I, I had vocal uh, issues. I well throat issues when I was younger. Before I, I tell, I've, I've explained this to a couple of different interviews. Is that when the first album came out, I had uh, severe. I had a chronic case of severe uh, tonsillitis, and my tonsils were literally rotting in my throat. Whoa. And when I did that record, every month, every every month, every couple months, I would get you know 106 temperature, sick as a fucking dog. So I had the the, the record company Roadrunner gave me 10 grand to have my tonsils removed. Wow! And uh, because it become that big of a problem, uh, two and a half weeks later, I went to Europe on tour. Whoa! <laughs> and I I did insurmountable damage to my throat. So you over the the, the the few records you hear it changing as it heals. I can go really low if I want. I mean, it's in the studio when I'm doing vocals and that. I mean, you have to. You know, I mean, if you tell me to go low, I, you know, I mean, when we record, it's like do a mid vocal, okay, do a high vocal, okay, do a low vocal, and that's how I, you know, cool. it's pretty simple. Well, with having, you know, such an extensive career, too, and being able to do it and, you know, vocals are just one thing. But like, how about, you know, through the years of headbanging and stuff and just performing live? Like, how do you kind of stay in shape and keep up with it? I'm a you know? fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you don't. That's an honest answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, well, it, I will- it, is it to a point, though, like it, that it is slightly like problematic? Like you got you're like, I don't know, like shoulders aches and or, or just neck or problems back, and yeah, stuff. Right. Or, well, man, you know, I mean, we all have our aches and pains, you know, yeah. but to, to me, I mean, playing music is like cooking or gardening. I mean, it's, <laughs> if anybody tells you it's any more difficult than that, they're, you know, a pussy. So. <laughs> and we got a lot of those anymore. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, many. but uh, yeah, I have my, I'm, I'm playing Gibsons now because I want to play lighter guitars and that. And I, I kind of started looking at myself. I'm like, you know what? You don't look cool playing those Def Leppard body styles anymore. So I think you need to start, you know, getting a little more old school look. So, and uh, yeah, I mean, strapping on a 20 pound guitar every night. Uh, yeah, that starts to, you know, yeah. I, I, have, would, I, I, would, like, I would consider Gibson's a heavier guitar, I guess. But when, when compared to some of those bigger, oh, the body, BC rich bodies. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Oh, those can get crazy too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, well, ES, ESP made me a, a custom EX Explorer, and um, it's oversized. So when I put it on, I'm like literally playing over top of the the, the uh, fretboard, and it's so heavy, man. It's just <laughs> it, you know what? It's just it don't look cool anymore. You right. know? <laughs> so when you're like so, when you're jamming and stuff, then are you playing bass, or do you like more prefer to play it on the guitar because it's like easier to come up with riffs and stuff? Um, when I'm writing, I, I got an acoustic and a Les Paul custom and, uh, I write on and I, I'm a guitar guy. Me and Steve, you know, we sit on the couch, you know, with our guitars next to us and we just, you know, do our thing and sit there and twiddle on the thing. And just, that's how we come up with riffs. And then we bring them to the band room and put it together. Kumbaya moments with DSI. (laughs) Yeah. But no, he sits on his couch at his house with his guitar. And if you come into my house, I got a guitar sitting next to me on my couch. So uh, that's, you know, he's our, we've already got, you know, I'm sure we got more than enough material gathered together for the new record. So, you know, when we kind of touched upon the, the whole wimpage and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm definitely curious. Yeah. There's gotta be, at least I would hope a top five reactions that you've can you just remember from having the inverted cross in your head, like grin at the grocery store. So like, <laughs> right. there's, I'll like, give you a bunch of good ones. Okay. <laughs> awesome. All right. My fucking, my uh, aunt living down here in Florida years ago, right after I was in, I was in, I got on the cover of the St. Pete times down here with a fresh cross burned in my forehead. <laughs> so this fucking douchebag takes it upon herself to contact my grandmother and tell my grandmother, Oh, man. Uh Uh-oh. So I got my fucking 75, 78-year-old grandmother fucking, come here! So... Let me look at it. So I, I let her take a look at it, and she, she looked at it, and it was all healed up at the time and everything. So, she looked at it, it's like she, like she was like looking at me, like she couldn't see what the, where it was. She goes, I don't see it. <laughs> that was one. That is good. Um, my parents, yeah, they, uh, 
It was definitely uncomfortable. <laughs> um, grocery store. I remember I was in the, the meat section <laughs> at the fucking supermarket. And I looked up to like the side, like I was like looking down in the meat and I turned sideways at this woman and she literally stumbled three steps backwards. <laughs> really? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, maybe it's an idiot deterrent, you know? It sounds and like then it. I, You know, then you got those ones that are like, hey, take that shit off your face. I'm like, yeah, right. I had a doctor, <laughs> I had a plastic surgeon look at it one time and this is no uh, true story. A plastic surgeon looks at it and I go, hey, what do you think? I mean, if I wanted to get that taken off, could we, you know, could we do it? He goes, yeah, but why? It looks cool. Plastic surgeon told me that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That is great. Yeah. Satanic surgeon. That wasn't one. I wasn't expecting any one of you to kind of like rooting for yeah, it. You know? Right, like, right. I was expecting like kind of what he said, you know, with the, <laughs> with the bombs. Yeah, speaking man, of it, You know, what? when you're around me that often, you, you don't even notice it, you know? So. Right, right. Well, speaking of that, was it true that... Uh, I don't remember if it was a motorcycle or, or a car or a truck um, that your license plate was Satan backwards or something like that. So that when people saw you in the rear view, it, it just said <laughs> Satan behind them. <laughs> no, no, oh, okay. never, that's not true. No, okay. but uh, the greats of the Florida death metal scene, you know, everyone is not entirely, you know, it's switching out bands and stuff, but there's a bit of it going on to a degree. And so Jack Owen ha having been in the band and then, departing and now he's in six feet under and you know i don't know what your opinion of six feet under's music is to me it's slightly laughable especially with all the uh acdc the covers, covers and yeah. stuff the graveyard cup classics <laughs> so but I, I guess in a way i am slightly asking your opinion like when it's like going on the six feet under was it kind of like a like he's dude he's gonna be going and making a graveyard classics album in the future like or is it just kind of like ah Whatever. good for you man right. go go on go on like is there and are you even like friendly and stuff with like chris barnes and you know the six feet under guys um, Chris has been a friend of mine for 30 some years. And, uh, as far as Jack is concerned, um, we have no hard feelings for Jack. And when we heard that he's playing with Chris, we were all kind of happy for him, you cool. know, cause it was not like, uh, you know, Jack left on bad terms. It just one, you know, like I say, like a bad marriage or, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend relationship comes to an end. It's just, uh, you know, it just runs its course. You know? Did Jack, like him still uh, being in the band, like, was that still uh, around the time that anything, like, did, would he have had any input for overtures of blasphemy or is that just, he, he was out? Yeah. Uh, Jack had wrote a couple songs and when I had Steve go back and reproduce all their songs, um, he turned Jack's two songs into one good song and Jack came in the room Um we were listening to it and Jack said, made a comment that that's not the way he wrote it. And me being a smart ass and uh, not proud of it or anything, but I said, I said, well, it is now. And <laughs> Jack turned around and walked out. And I think that was pretty much it. Okay. Steve, Steve <laughs> told me to uh, take care of it. So what is a casual day in the life of Glenn Benton? Yeah. What time does it start? <laughs> when are you waking up? In the um, my day starts at 5.45. Oh, wow. <laughs> getting up for breakfast? You're getting up doing it hitting the gym? Or? Um, no, I have a 17-year-old son who has to get off to school. I got to make sure he's up and out the door. Um, I start dealing with business. Um, then I get my my uh, check off to work and then I get ready and I go out and do eight miles on my bike. Nice. And I uh, come home, take a shower, straighten up, uh, you know, get back into, you know, handling band business and band related shit. Um, depending on what day of the week it is, uh, I usually head to rehearsals around three thirty four, sometime around there. Okay. So like there isn't really a point in time where deicide's even really off for the most part then. Uh, we just, yeah, we're just, we're close knit, man. So it's like just a text away from rehearsal. That's awesome. And I was going to mention some of the, the guys. So Kevin's kind of been around for a while now and I've had some conversations with, with him, uh, in the interwebs and he seems like a, a super great guy. Um, you know, truly passionate, truly into, into the music. And obviously he's, he's, uh, been working with Steve for some time as well. Um, and Mark is, uh, with, 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 is he with Monstrosity for for a time there, oh, too? I think so, yeah. Right. Yeah, he's still with them. Yeah, he's oh, still playing with them. So he, he yeah. was part of that new record for them? Yeah. Yeah, which was just sounding great as well. I can't wait to hear the rest of it, actually. 
Is it true there was even ever kind of a beef with King Diamond back in the day or presently or ever, really? Um, no, other than, you know, uh, when I met, I had run a, uh, I'll give you the whole story. I had run an ad in a local trade magazine in Tampa looking for a drummer and a guitar player. And Brian Hoffman called me and that's how we all met. Mm -hmm. Um, I moved them guys into my house um, in Clearwater. We started rehearsing there. And when they met me, the name that I had and that I had for a band was Amon. Yeah. And I had gotten that probably a couple. I came up with that like a year or two before I even met them guys. I came up with the name Amon so for a band. And King Diamond had come out with an album that had the name Amon in it. Right. So yeah, yeah. Road, Roadrunner felt it'd be in everybody's best interest for us, you know, as far as, you know, our, you know, for us to just change our name. So that's how I had written a song deicide and I just used the uh, title from the song for the name of the band. And I think it's a better fit. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, agree. Better anyway. But uh, no, there was a cop. Conf- I mean, I remember Hoffman uh, getting in King Diamond's face and then trying to intimidate the guy and that, but I never had any problems with King Oh, May, and that's that's probably worth what the little where that came from. Yeah, yeah. Where, where any of that even came from then. What bands did you enjoy touring with? You know, uh, what, are, what are the guys you, you think of fondly and, and the bands you, you have good relationships with in touring and, and you like to be around and, and that kind of thing? Um, I mean, I got I've made a lot of friends over the years playing. I played with a lot of different acts and that uh, Billy Milano from S.O.D. M.O.D. Uh, the guys in Demolition Hammer, you know, I mean, awesome. I played with. I've played with everybody from Pantera to you, know, you name it, man. And everybody in the business has always been just very nice and kind and everybody's cordial, you know? Awesome. Well, and mentioning that too, that kind of makes me curious. Are there like any no, like more, you know, higher up, like, so I guess celebrities uh, that you've run into and they're like, dude, I'm a huge Deicide fan. It's yeah, just any like, surprises? you? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Ice-T is a huge Deicide fan. Oh, awesome. That is surprising. <laughs> I, I guess. He called- yeah, he called me out. When, uh, I was um, at the Milwaukee uh, Metal Fest years ago with Vital, and I heard somebody yelling out my name, and I turned around. It was Ice T, and he's huge Legion fan. Ah, see, Legion yeah, coming back. Go. Now see, you got to yeah. add some songs. <laughs> uh, and, uh, Steve-O, uh, Steve-O from Jackass. He's a huge. Uh, He's a huge uh, Serpents of the Light fan. Ah, we, we are big fans yes, of that yeah, album yeah. as well. Yes. <laughs> And I'm kind so of surprised. Everybody about that. has their favorite, man. You know what I mean? So, obviously, there wasn't really death metal uh, when you guys started. You guys helped kind of create that. But uh, as you've kind of been in the scene and were growing up in within that little scene, you guys had created. Like, what were some of your favorite records uh, from bands that were similar, or did you kind of just do your own thing and? and- yeah, like uh, the Exorcist, Black Masses was a great record for me too, man. Oh hell yeah, uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, that was a great record back in the day. I listened to a lot of that, like obscure shit, like Pile Driver from Canada. Yeah, yeah. Lot. Which I think I mean, has I, a whole I was Exorcist into, tie. Yeah. Yeah, I was in the like to that. I was into that going to the record store and and friends of mine be like, yeah, this came out. Check this out. So I, you know, and I worked for Camelot Music. Uh-huh. Um, in, a, in yeah. a mall, and I used to get, I used to I used to get to help myself to all the promotional shit. So that's how I got my hands on all that stuff. Oh, nice! Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting to hear Exorcist. That's great. Yeah, that is awesome. I love I love that's that. That's a great record, man. I put that out all the time just to scare the old lady up. <laughs> Are you aware? Like they just um, this label out of Germany, High Roller Records, just reissued that, and there's like four different like mixes of that album. I mean, you well, got to be an uber dork, and I am, <laughs> and I, I, I was excited to listen to it i was like holy shit like <laughs> that's awesome yeah so if you want to get to reacquaint yourself with exorcist i, I yeah, highly you recommend redis- it. yeah you rediscover all this shit as you get older you're like wow i haven't heard that in a long time you know? oh totally i like that kind of metal. i like that kind of metal you know i like this yeah, that's yeah just stuff with care like that definitely is a an embodiment of uh, original well, character. character yeah for <laughs> sure 100 yeah. percent. glenn we have a few uh just fun things we want to do it's always kind of fun to see what people say uh we're going to do a kind of word association so to give you an example we'll say a word we just want you to think of the, the first thing you think of whether it's ridiculous or not whatever just comes to mind uh 
It could be one word. If you want to elaborate on it, that's fine. But we're just kind of looking for quick, like, knee-jerk reactions. So, for example, if I was to say Lemmy. <laughs> I would say he, I think he's a little bit overrated. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just something like that, you know, just something fun. We're just gonna so wanna... you're going to be, like, name-dropping people then? No, well, not people. Uh, words, more or less. <laughs> words, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, I, think be, I think you'll be su- su- surprised by some of what we, we got. <laughs> some, some will be expected. Hey, Benedict. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> well, when you're ready, we're ready. Go ahead, man. Jehovah's Witness. Pain in the ass. <laughs> Judas. Judas? Yep. Yeah. Hanging from a rope. Pontius Pilate. A man of stature. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cannibal corpse. Uh, <laughs> we can leave that, it. An that, that, that. That could be the answer right there. Good guys. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, mornings, like morning, like a.m. Yes, mornings. Ugh. Okay, that's good. Uh, Damien. <sighs> My old base tech. Harley's. Harley's? Yep. Sitting in the garage. Vegan. Pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> the Buffalo Bills. Ugh. <laughs> uh, to, just a couple more. Snow? Hate it. Dogs? Smell. Cats? Pain in the ass. <laughs> All right. So that actually kind of leads us in. You know, I was like... Getting ready this morning and knew I was going to do this. And I was kind of trying to think of some interesting questions. And as I was kind of rolling around in, in my, my brain there, it's like, I wonder if Glenn's a dog or a cat person. And I was kind of like breaking down, you know, the animal. And I was like, man, a, a cat would be way more satanic, I think. They kind of like uh, do their own uh, thing. They walk their own path. They don't give a shit about what anyone <laughs> else does or says they're going to do their own thing. Whereas dogs more of like the follow the leader type. You know, so uh, well, I had a uh, my dog recently passed away a year ago. Sorry to hear and that. I had I had, a, I had an English bulldog, so it was like living with a special needs child for ten years. Oh man! So uh, in uh, yeah, dude, that thing smelled like a behemoth. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was uh, yeah, I, I yeah, but uh, yeah, we have uh, two cats, two black cats here. Okay. And uh, they're na- yeah, they're uh, we name our animals after the. Uh, characters in the Smokey and the Bandit movie. So, <laughs> okay. um, Smokey died. So, uh, we got Bandit and Buford still kicking. Nice. Yeah. It was, since one of the words was Jehovah's Witness, Glenn, I was curious that there was something that was said one point that you had said, for whatever reason or another, that the best way to handle a Jehovah's Witness coming to your door is to answer the door with your pants down. <laughs> Still doing that? Still doing that? <laughs> you know what we got in my neighborhood is those those kids that ride around on the bicycles with the uh, protective helmets and the white shirts and the tie. Are those Mormons? Um, the, Wait, what I, I'm not sure if they're Later Day Saints or Mormons or what, but I was out here working on my Camaro in the dark out here in the garage, and I literally felt somebody standing behind me. Now, keep in mind, I've had to warn these dorks several times to stay the fuck away from my house. So I, I turn around, man, and this fucking dude is standing right behind me, man, looking like fucking somebody from a fucking Nazi youth camp. Fucking, I literally, with my just my motion, my forward motion, propelled him off of my property. It was like I was moving him with my mind. <laughs> but it was just the sheer terror of me coming after you in the dark. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they don't come back anymore. So I, I could only imagine. I mean, if there's a guy in the world that exists that is like, a who the f- Listen, man, we live in a concealed weapons state. Who sneaks up behind people in the dark? It doesn't sound like a bright thing to do. You no. Need, you need one of those, uh, you know, the, the beware of dog signs. You need, a, you need a beware of Satan or beware, beware of, of Glenn. Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I have a fucking 1,700-pound fucking gargoyle statue in the front of my house. No bullshit. Okay? <laughs> nice. And um, I keep wind chimes out there because Jehovah Witnesses hate wind chimes. They think oh, the really? spirits speak through Yeah, they think spirits speak through them. So oh, wow. if you want to keep them idiots off your property, just put some wind chimes out front. I actually do have some wind chimes. <laughs> These are in wise the back. words. I need to switch Yeah, that's, that's seriously. That's, I mean, that's the fucking crazy stuff. 
crazy talk, you know. But uh, <laughs> oh, it totally is like what you you and me, we, us talking about it. It's just like, ah, yeah. we're like them, if they're crazy like, no. enough to think that that I'm crazy enough to put that shit out there. So, <laughs> well, you know, so Glenn, through those years of always kind of having you know anti uh, Christian lyrics and stuff, does it ever really get old? Kind of attacking old JC or. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, I really don't even think about it. I just roll, let it roll out of me, roll out of me. And, um, I, and I tell everybody this, if you, if, if you want me to have writer's block, make me try to write about something other than that. Cause <laughs> I can't think of anything else. It's just, that's the only thing that comes out of me naturally. So, I mean, like taking a shit, you want it to, you know, flow right out of you. So I shit hate in Christ. <laughs> Nobody wants to really put any effort into this. <laughs> Where did it really stem from, though? Did you, like, did you have to go to, like, Catholic school or something as a kid and just, like, <sighs> you know, or, like, was your family really religious? Or? I mean, I did, and I get well, it. Well, my parents, my parents, my father, I didn't know what the fuck he was. I never seen him attend church once anywhere. Um, my mother was Lutheran, and she did a stint as a Lutheran Sunday school teacher, and we all had to attend and um, that was traumatic. Um, <laughs> I had been kicked out of just about every school in fucking Niagara Falls. So they tried to put me in a fucking Catholic school. That didn't work out. I <laughs> burned <laughs> <it> down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even make it past the first 20 minutes, to be honest with you. <laughs> so uh, that's, you know, and uh, like I say, I, my parents, to me, I mean, church was like a punishment. Oh, yeah, um, right, Sunday totally. morning, the church bus would pull out. Uh, pull up in front of the house and my father, you know, would, you know, I mean, almost physically throw us out the fucking door. (laughs) And that was probably because he wanted to fucking bang mom and watch football. (laughs) So that's my impression of church. But all my life, my whole family always, you know, referred to me as an evil little bastard. And so that's. I had to live up to their expectations. Gotcha. There's actually something funny that, that Craig had brought up a pre-interview that I thought might be interesting to ask you. Um, someone had mentioned, I, I don't know, maybe it was a Carrie King thing that you said, but oh, okay. they were saying, uh, it's oh, like an actor's oh. studio question. Oh, inside, like, oh yeah, because uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that uh, whole inside the actor studio sh- program, but it doesn't really matter. Because I guess there's like some sort of uh, scientist or psychologist or something, some sort of stream of questions that one of them I thought would be particularly interesting to ask you is that if God exists and you're at the pearly gates right in front of him, what do you say? Oops. <laughs> That's just as good as of an answer. Uh, Kerry King's, I think, was like, sorry. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> like, he oops, shrugged sorry. and he was like, I don't know, yeah, sorry. sorry. I think oops is better. Oops yeah, I, is better. I like oops. <laughs> oops, oops is definitely good. <laughs> sorry, man, you were falsely portrayed. You had a bunch of crazy Ignorance people. is bliss. <laughs> right, there it is. <laughs> Very good responses. I uh, have another little game for you. We're calling it this or that. So I'm going to give you a kind of an option of two things and just asking you to, to, to pick one. Um, so first one we got for you is semi-automatic or automatic both okay Fords or Chevys both wow Harleys or Triumphs both Wow, man, we're going here. That's, you know what, man? It's like you know what? Yeah, it's all good. I got a fuck. I got a Ford pickup truck and a Chevy Camaro. Um, I have a Harley, and I s- sold my Triumphs. And um, what was the other one? Semi-automatic or automatic? They run them both. <laughs> well, here's one that's more polar opposite. Nights or mornings? Mornings. Bills or bucks? The, the teams. I, uh, bucks. Sabres or lightning? Lightning. All right. That's all I got. I just <laughs> want to throw a couple of things at you. See where I, you're going. Hey, you got to get nerdy and fun with. Yeah, I thought you were more of a Buffalo I'm Bills kinda, you fan. Know what, I don't man, know. I, we heard that. I, you know what? I uh, I just don't. Uh, I don't know, man. My tastes have changed over the years, and that. But I really don't. You know what? After you know, with the whole world the way it is anymore, it's like I'm afraid to fucking. 
I'm afraid to watch anything on TV or wear a certain type of shoe or fucking, I'm afraid to do anything anymore. I'm, I'm almost like reduced to John Travolta in a plastic bubble. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you want to be that guy, <laughs> but I, I feel like I've just like totally like, you know, pushed everything of normality out of my life is because it's not politically correct anymore. So it's like, even down to my fucking underwear, so I got to see, make sure that I'm not stepping on somebody's fucking toes. Right. By what the, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm afraid, you know, it's like, do I got to put a piece of black tape over everything I own or what? He wears Calvin Klein, so he must be homophobic or, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, or any more, too. It's like, you yeah. know, because you mentioned SOD, and I, I've heard that, like, now, like, Scotty Ann or uh, Billy Milano, they're, like, getting shit for speak English or die. And it's like, dude, that was 30 years ago. Like, right. like if no one cared then, like, uh, and maybe they did, I don't know, but, like, like what you know what I mean? Like now you're just searching the beat. It's prick. obviously like, all time. Uh, you know cheek, what? Listen, you know? man. You know what? When it comes down, it's like it's like should I let my kid play with play doh or <laughs> should I not let the kid play with play doh? Pretty much, yeah. Right, right. Right. <laughs> like, what are you worried about? What I'm doing? Worry about your kid playing with the play doh at that point? Uh, that's the way the fucking world is now. So I live in a fucking shell. Okay. <laughs> so. Speaking of that shell, though, are you are you a football fan or, or a hockey fan anymore? I used to be. I used to be, man. But now oh, that's I'm gone too, of, huh? <laughs> I just kind of just, you know what? I just, it's like, I can't, I don't know, man. It was just ignorance is bliss. I, I, all the teams I like suck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're in this. I'm kind of in the same boat. There. So what the fuck? You know, it's like, I don't want to make, I don't want to, I'm done making claims of fame when it comes to fucking what I like anymore. Right. Cause I, I'm, if I say I hate them, I'm going to get hated. If I say I like them, I'm going to get hated. So you're pretty much, like I say, reduced to a neutral, you know, color. Well, you've definitely, speaking of claiming the fame, you've kind of claimed the fame, your interactions previously with Bob Larson. Like, how did those come to end? Because, like, that was, like, I don't know, as a fan, like, that's, like, some of the best things you can, like, listen to. Like, one of your favorite bands doing is, like, attacking, you know, a, a, a Christian An figure. like that. Well, that's, I mean, that's in a whole other ball game, too. I mean, you're my talking. Interaction, my interaction with that was no more than a week or so. Mm -hmm. And it was, I, I was... I roped into it. Somebody told me, Hey, it's just like, you know, doing an interview with you guys. Yeah. Somebody told me from the record company to call this number. And, um, yeah, I got put into it, uh, you know, and, um, what do you do? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, throw yeah. On Lynn, you turn your Linda Blair on, you know I mean? So you just, <laughs> yeah, that's, I, you know, basically that's what he wanted. You know what I mean? It wasn't like he, I mean, he knew what we're, what, what, what this was getting ready to turn into. Right, the circus. Right. So, I mean, I gave him the fucking circus. <laughs> and that was like, I, you know, I was kind of researching last night and watching old interviews and stuff. And I came across this bizarre interview you did in France on, on live television. It looked like a Sally Jesse Raphael type situation. And, and you're just looking miserable. Like, this is the last place <laughs> you want to be. It, yeah, like, you yeah. can't understand anything anyone's saying. And then they're like right. speaking so, what so do you do? fast. You just, sit there, you sit there like a fucking bump on a log and look, <laughs> you know, it's like trying to like make a couple grins here and there. And right. like, uh, and give them that fucking, you know, that. That evil bad guy fucking persona they want, you know, right. give it to them. Right, right exactly. Is, I mean, that kind of sort of seems because, you know, I'm sure you've heard it through the grapevine that like, oh, Glenn's a total dick. And it's just kind of like having this interview. I don't know. Glenn seems to be totally fucking cool to me. Like, it honestly just seems like kind of what you're saying. Like, you get roped into these situations that are just bullshit. Well, people asking and, a dumbass yeah. question that you give them a, the, the response. So you it's know? almost like I, I really kind of think, A, like, yeah, probably the sense of humor and then the situations. It's almost like you're misunderstood. And that's where, like, a lot of people come up with what these accusations. Like, oh, he's just a dick. And it's like, ah, I think there's probably more to it than that. You know, well, man, you know what? It's like people don't understand. This is a job for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I enjoy what I do and everything, but it's a job. Right. And just like I'm sure you and him and other people you know have called in sick to work before. Right. Um, and we have those same kind of situations in a band where somebody dies, somebody gets sick, somebody's having to fight for custody of their kid. And then you got these people out there, man, placing judgment on us and that and calling us the guns and roses of death metal and <laughs> all the other fucking silly, stupid shit they say or whatever and that. But listen, man, I mean, nobody, nobody wants to have that kind of, that's, you know, that's stigma, you know what I mean? And I said, yeah. man, we, uh, 
I got away from the question. Go ahead. No, I mean, it, it, it really just kind of proves it, though, too, because, you know, here we are on the uh, the 12th studio album, Overtures of Blasphemy. And, I mean, if if, so, if you're such a dickhead or if you're such, you know, not into right. this or, or whatever someone says, how do you got 12 studio albums? How are you around for 30 30 well, man, plus listen, you know, it's like when you wake up, you know, people understand. It's like, well, yeah, the guy just got off a 28 hour flight. Right. Um, yeah. Exactly. Not, you know, he's not doing cartwheels to shake your hand. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, people so- don't. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I mean, you, 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 you know, you, you might be wore out, exhausted in that. I mean, I mean, honestly, man, I would tell you, it's the truth. I don't know. I mean, it's probably true for a lot of guys in this business. That first week of being on a tour the worst i feel like i'm being physically beaten with sticks man yeah, that's man. how fucking bad my body and yeah, everything yeah. hurts well, like back jet lag and swinging thing, you know well yeah. i mean i i've not i've not toured <laughs> to the extreme lengths you have toured but in my short i've seen people i've seen 300 pound tough guys fucking break down in tears begging for a ticket home man okay right, so right. if totally. it was that fucking easy everybody would be doing it exactly it you know when i was on on the road too i mean people don't realize like this sucks you know we were in a fucking van you know it's like the worst you're sleeping in a van, you're living yeah. in a van, you're with yeah. all these dudes sweating right. and smelling like shit, and that's your life, and you're fucking eating fast food, and you feel like shit, and then you gotta go... Pro- and you just got done fucking answering 30 stupid questions, and then here you come up with fucking <laughs> question, stupid question number 31. <laughs> how's the tour going? Yeah, yeah, yeah how's the, the tour? I'll tell you how the, the tour is going. And it's time. like, you know, it's like, and you try to, do it. Like, I always say to my old lady all the time, it's like, I feel like a fucking stripper sometimes. No matter how I feel, I gotta get up on that fucking pole with a smile on my face right. they're not gonna throw <laughs> dollars at me <laughs> well it's true you know i remember people asking for autographs and stuff i'm like you really want my fucking autograph i'm fucking sleeping in the van over there man like you don't want yeah, this right. you know give me a break <laughs> <laughs> yeah people don't get it yeah. though when, when they're on the other side you know but no. you know it is what it is so no, yeah, I mean, you feel funny. I mean, you. I mean, nobody. I mean, nothing makes you feel more important than signing autographs inside of Denny's at fucking three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right. Yeah. The whole. Let me put my moons over Miami down. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. Man, I would love to see him and Billy Milano in a room together. I think it would be the most hilarious. Yeah, we have, we, we have a pretty funny time, man. He's just pretty, record you guys for like an hour. Yeah, yeah. We. Uh, it's, it could be. Uh, we could have our own podcast. I'll, I'll tell you what, There's I would love an idea to be, right there. Yeah, and, and and if you don't want to take on that burden and just do it for somebody and have an episode for them, I would love to be that podcast. <laughs> that would be a great one. That would be one for the yeah, ages. Oh, my for God. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just let them go. You don't even need to say anything. No, just or maybe get him on a topic or something. Right. Like, is Billy kind of like into, like, is he more too, like, hip to the, you know, having a gripe with uh, religion and, and stuff, or is he more, like, political? Like, I don't really know much about him. Uh, I just, Bill is just anti pussies. You know what I mean? He's just like, (laughs) I mean, if you, if you got, if you're wet behind your ear, man, he's that type of guy. He's like, he smells that shit. You know what I mean? It's like, if you're weak, he can fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. He can smell it like blood. When he's got quite the reputation, I know a lot of guys, you know, back in the day, like, you didn't fuck with Billy, that kind of thing, and he protected a lot of guys. So, you know, I mean, is he still? He's kinda, a good people, man. Yeah. I don't care what people say about it. I know he's, he, uh, you know, I mean, he's got an opinion, man, and you can't silence that. And I wouldn't want to, you know what I mean? So, of course, when well, Bill fucking chimes in on something, it's fucking for me. It makes my day. <laughs> well, and you're right about that kind of saying. You wouldn't want to, you know, you'd miss it having that because you know there's unfortunately going to be a day that we don't have our Glenn Bentons or our Billy Milano's, you know, people that are speaking up uh, against the popular opinion, especially right. nowadays, like everybody's a wimp and, and me, you know, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not entirely young. I'm not entirely old, but I'm entirely concerned because when we, <laughs> when we look, well, cause you know, you know, your, your Glenn Bentons and your Billy Milano's, you know, are getting older. And so, like when we lose that, because it's a gen, it's kind of a generational thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, when what do you guys left then? Taylor Swift. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just like, what the hell do we got now? Like we got a bunch of wins. We got Taylor like, Swift. Like we're gonna be fucked, you know. So I don't know. I'm scared of that day. Do you think there's a a, a younger contender though for the the Glenn Benton position, or that's just one we're of a fucked. kind? I haven't seen any likes of. I, I'm a kind <laughs> of a rare bird, man. <laughs> so you're just as scared for us. I, I, I yeah. It's, <laughs> It's, it's a challenge for me to do the most simplest things. You said you had a son. Like, where, where is, is he like, a, is he I a have two, I, have, I, have, I have a son that lives up in New Jersey. <laughs> and uh, I have uh, my son that lives here. He's 17. How are they uh, about DSI? Are they fans or? 
Yeah, no, they fucking bust my balls. <laughs> what is there? What, what balls are there bust about that? I mean, Dad, you're in a, a yeah, badass a depot band. What well, think, you know what? It's like I'll send piece. my older son because he needs a guitar player. He's a shredder, and I, okay. I send him. You know, I'll send him like something like news on the band or something. He'd be like. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, that's great. I was just kind of hoping you'd be proud of me. And, uh, then, you know, it's like, he just, he's like, you know, I am. I just got to fucking bust your balls. So he's, he like shows lack of interest to see if I'll say something else. I kind of should yeah, yeah. torment me. I'm a, the honesty yeah. of children. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, like, yeah. They know how to put yeah. you in your place. That's for sure. It's like I spent the beginning of my career, you know, you know, not wanting to go on tour because I'd miss my family. Right. And now it's like in my later years of doing this, I can't wait to get the fuck away from them. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, funny how shit works out. You know, exactly. you're like, you got it. like I, your heart's aching. You're like, I miss them so bad. And then, you, you know, you get to be my age. And you're like. If I don't get out of this fucking house, <laughs> I'm going to do what I always wanted to do to Jehovah's Witness to your fucking face. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's bad when your old lady's calling you. It's like, are you ever going to call home? No. <laughs> Not Lose <enough>. this number. <laughs> you guys, you got to get that talk. Like, now call home. Don't, don't, you know, so Put it to before you it's way. like. I'd rather talk to Bob Larson than you. <laughs> you know, years ago, we first toured Europe and that with my first wife here. I mean, it's uh, running around with 30 pounds of fucking coins in a bag trying to find a payphone at three in the morning to call home. <laughs> now, how about movies, though? Like, because you, uh, uh, Deicide is, um, you know, I did, uh, oh man, Dead by Dawn was a kind of a node to uh, Evil Dead or Evil Dead 2, I think, rather. Um, right. Like, so is that to imply that you're a pretty big horror fan or? Um, well, yeah, I like, you know, I like scary movies. I haven't seen a good one in a long time. But I don't I mean, think any of us have. <laughs> it's a bunch of mediocre fucking scary movies these days and that, you know, I mean, but. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm a fan of the old shit. You know, whenever an old Hellraiser movie comes out, one nice. through three, maybe uh, I will watch it. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, when you watch a Freddy Krueger movie now, you're like, what the fuck was I scared of? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a comedy yeah, yeah, flick. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. When they remade stupid. that, I was like, it, it could kind of use a remake, and then they kind of just fucked it up. But well, <laughs> it, surprisingly, yeah, they, like, <laughs> surprisingly, like. You go back and watch The Exorcist, though, and it's like, holy shit. Like, how did this come out when it came oh, yeah. out? And, like, what was that reaction Because she like? wouldn't be able to do They wouldn't remake that today, and she's going to be masturbating with a cross or pissing. Right. So what was the guy that was, what's his name, the, the Nolan guy that did the fucking, uh, the Batmans that were all dark. That's who needs to do the Freddy Krueger movie. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Stop doing Batman. We had a good Batmans before. Make that, that shit. Make that shit dark. Right. That would be. I. I agree. Well, now, like something like. Well, now that they're coming out with a new Halloween, like, are you like, and going back where they dismiss all the sequels and John Carpenter's involved uh, in it? Like, I, do you care? You would have. You would literally have to drag me, <laughs> kicking and screaming. To go see another Halloween movie. <laughs> Lost faith in them. I, I'm I'm kind of there with you. I, I but uh, you know the only new ones that I even you know can give any like nod to or you know the insidious you know I think that first one I thought was was pretty decent and uh, you know maybe that Conjuring the first one or something you know I thought those were okay for like a Hollywood flick and there was a couple new ones that were kind of B underground and I wish I could think of the name of them they kind of had an old school feel like kind of like uh, what eight millimeter or sixteen millimeter yeah. you know, even look um, that did okay but uh, other than that man it's it's been slim pickings. Is there anything? Well, I, we were watching the pre. My, I was I seen the previews for the Halloween, the new thing there yeah, on yeah. TV, and I said to my old lady, I go, I thought Burgess Meredith died, and she goes, No, that's Jamie Lee Curtis. I go, Wow, oh, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's, that's going to be an interesting one. How they? Oh, well, we, we're just Ugh. tying it all in. We're just missing everything. It's I mean, like, even after that many years, I wouldn't want to look at my own sister. You know, so <laughs> I, I would have completely moved to the other side of the country. The, the scream queen has lost a little bit of her value there. <laughs> right. hey, like, ain't Michael Myers like in his seventies now? <laughs> well, that, that's the with thing. Yeah, he Michael be, Myers with the game. Well, he'd be sixty-one. He was twenty. He would, in, per the story, in nineteen seventy-eight, he was twenty-one. So now, forty years later, he's sixty-one. Like he's push I'll, him over. Like, yeah. Well, what he should be like on a cruise like, ship <laughs> eating buffet. Oh man, I didn't think about it until now. I'm gonna be t like, if they twist that movie where it's like it's Michael Myers' son, 
They're like this is fu- what a what a fucking cheap shot. Like this sucks. <laughs> kind of like that Halloween. What was the one Halloween where it was through the television set thing, whatever the fuck commercial it was or whatever, and you heard it and you went and took a shit. What was that? Oh, one? that was Halloween the third one with the masks. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, the yeah, season that, of the that, Wisp. That was cheesy, yeah. but I had I had my enjoyment of that. That was a eighties <laughs> bad is different than two thousand eighteen bad. Like it's just I, flat made, out. I made it through about twenty minutes of it before I walked out. I've walked out of a lot of movies like that Jack and Jill with Jim Carrey. I walked out of that within ten minutes. Now uh, did you ever have to yell at the, you ever have to yell at anybody for just not shutting the fuck up at a movie theater? I just had that just happened to me. I got a bunch <laughs> of free tickets. The manager was a DSI fan, hooked me up with some free passes and shit because. Oh, nice. So people thought it would be good to bring their four-month-old in, uh, infant baby into the movie theater. They thought that would be great, good idea. <laughs> so how does that apprehend? Like, how does that uh, come about? He just shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm sitting there, my even my kid was like, "Dad, say something." <laughs> because I've, I've actually I've been there myself. In fact, it was Halloween. It was like a a, a Halloween. T- you know the the time of year showing of Halloween on the big screen and people are sitting there whispering. It's just dude, shut the fuck up. This cost me thirty bucks to see this fucking movie and you're you know whispering in the background. You know? My my thing is this man is that they they give you like thirty warnings on the screen in front of you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and shut your fucking phone off. Well, what, what, yeah. So, what's the Glenn Benton take on the the, the phones and everybody? Because because the, the old the meme of nowadays is someone will put like my generation and it'll be a picture of like you know the '80s and people are stage diving and shit and raging and then it'll be your ge- generation it'll be 2018 and you see all these cell phones like does the that Pontiac, just, the does, Pontiac Fiero? Yeah. Well, it, kind of. <laughs> in addition, I'm kind of interested because even at a deicide gig, you know, you've kind of even you know told people in the audience that maybe filming the show or something, you know, to turn that shit off or whatever. So like, is that, cause you heard about like misfits coming back and they yeah, make no people cell phones, yeah, right. take their cell phones. Like, is that something that uh, you would consider doing with DSI or is that just too much work and ah, fuck it. Let these people have their phones. Hey man, listen, you know what? I, I have my moments with the cell phone thing. Okay. Now you, if you're that asshole who puts his fucking <laughs> light on his phone and he's filming <laughs> me with your fuck, and you got that thing right in my fucking face while I'm trying to do my job, I will slap it out of your hands. I've done it. I'm notorious for it. Right. But if you stand back and you film and you're not a dick about it, I don't give a shit, man. It's just when you make a fucking make a nuisance of yourself is when I fucking take offense. So totally. yes. there you go. I'm telling you, you yeah. You know what? It's that's mistaken, that's just, man. Yeah. Glenn hey, is man, a reasonable man. He's uh, he's just mis- it's mistaken. I'm telling <laughs> it's it, I'm telling you, and it's just it's just these. Well, man, are- listen. If I took a fucking stick and picked up a piece of dog shit at the tip of it and stuck <laughs> it under your fucking nose, you would slap it away too, right? So. <laughs> Good analogy. <laughs> yes, I would. Well. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. With 100%. Glenn. I'm really glad you took the time out, and I hope you, you had more fun doing this interview than the, the typical, how's the tour going, even though you're not on one? <laughs> but, uh, so, but, but before we leave, I did go, getting back to Overtures of Blasphemy, which out now, get it, the link is in the Killer description record. to grab it. 100%. Yes, yes, I, I really definitely think that it, like you kind of even said in other interviews, it kind of embodies like all the great moments of DSI right. and, and, and really puts that into different songs. And, so, and, and you've also even said, and I totally noticed it that like each song like has a different mood has a different flow and and that is that's kind of something that I hadn't really no I mean not to say that every song on a DS side record sounds the same but it's just like the mood of it really kind of totally changed a little bit without being like overly melodic and all of a sudden they're doing something they never did but like just choosing maybe a key or something to be in for that and, and just slightly the riffage like it kind of sets a different mood and and I notice a little bit of that and, and well, there's something on there for everybody I think yeah yeah we kind of found an even keel man you got right. three writers that are writing and then the three those three writers you know improvising on each person's material and that to, to improve it to give it that sound when we wrote this album. I mean, this is our last record for century is contractually. Um, and you just come in at this point in my life. It's like, eh, you know what? We've done so many records, you know, and every time you do a record, you hold out that it's going to be, you know, it's, you know, every, you're going to get huge, whatever. I mean, you, you still have a hold on to those aspirations. I don't care how old you are. And that, but, um, with this, we just kind of like had that, like, let's write music, like the music that we grew up listening to. Let's, let's, yeah. let's, 
let's let that influence our writing on this, the stuff that we like growing up. Let's let that influence this album. And I was really focused on the hooks. That's, I got involved in writing and that and was able to give those guys an idea of what I was looking for through what I was writing. And then we all just focused on writing in that particular vein. So it, it worked out well, man. Totally. And I, I'd like to make a note on that. Um, and I think it's very important. And you kind of said it in your, your explanation there. You guys write songs. And I think that gets lost in, in a lot of death metal, especially where it gets more technical and some of the newer bands and stuff. They they might be able to shred. They might be able to do these things. But it's like, man, these guys can't write a goddamn song to save their life. Yeah. And where It's all Pro Tools, man. You know, that's why we didn't we didn't use I mean, we, we used, you know, the, the latest technology, but we didn't let we didn't go back and erase all the 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 little things that give it that rawness and like the drums we went for a natural sound with the drums the vocals are more of a natural sound with all that i actually played a fender jazz deluxe bass on the album so oh, that's nice. where you get that, that super low end and um we just did things purposely like you know what who gives with that just like who gives a fuck you know it's like, it's like who cares let's just do it and have fun doing it and if it turns out great fantastic if not you know what at least we you know we've done our thing but it's nice to always you know leave a record company on a high note for sure yeah that's great and i maybe it's the the old school uh that you came from as far as like you had to write songs back then because you didn't have the ability to so easily chop and paste and do all those things um but I, but I will it was say, like you know what this like I was gonna say this you know it's kind of like the old days, where it's awesome. like back then you had nothing to lose. You know yeah. what I mean? That's how we are now. You know, you ain't got nothing to lose. And, you so know what I mean? It, when yeah. you have that man, that nothing to lose mentality, sometimes spurs some of the greatest shit and accomplishments in you know the history of this fucking world. Totally. But I, I do want to commend you again uh, for the catalog and the fact that you've always written songs and you've always had hooks. I mean, I can't tell you. Um, you know, looking back, you know, I, you know, I've been a fan since since around Legion, um, and my favorite probably is still being the self titled. But Serpents is right there, Once Upon a Cross, and Serpents for me. And Serpents has such great hooks. Yeah. So, and it's something that you've carried out through throughout your yeah. career, you've just really known how to how to write a great hook and a memorable hook that just stays with you. And that's that's something to say for death metal because there is no melodic line and there is no melody for, for someone to remember and catch on to. I can't listen. I can't listen to that. Right. I, after, I mean, after 30, you know, minutes or something like that, nothing is stuck in my head. Nothing right. has left an impression on me. It's one dimensional. And I mean, I, and I've said this before, I would rather the, the 6,000 people that have liked one of the songs on YouTube right now to buy the album, opposed to the 196 people that gave me a thumbs down, which is probably all, you know, ex-wives and all that kind of <laughs> shit. Corey Taylors and, you know. Uh, speaking of a wimp. Yeah. <laughs> so the other, all the other people in the world that hated me, I, I'd rather sell records to that 6,000 people than that 100-something people that, you know, are stuck in that one-dimensional death metal. <laughs> And of course, it comes from the generation too, being kind of the forefather of it. But the thing that I love best about Deicide, it, there is never the "Well, we got older, we matured." <laughs> it's just no. Like Glenn sounds like Glenn, and it's right. going to be just. If, I, hell, there might even be points that you could almost think that newer material could be even more intense, maybe vocally or or musically, whatever the case. But like. There's, uh, needless to say, there's definitely no point of this album where it's just like well, yeah. they've wimped out. You well, know, where, here's the ballad. Like, what the what the hell? Like, you know? I just don't. There'll never be a ballad. I mean, Steve, you know, Steve actually did a version, and uh, we do have it. You know, uh, demoed out of "Dust in the Wind" by Kansas, and um, we may possibly release that sometime. That would but be it's, interesting to hear. when you hear it, it's it's played in a, a black metal guitar for you know the way uh the way he's playing it and arranged it and that and it's it's What's sick that? fast and it's like i mean it's pretty it's it's pretty heavy so we might maybe the next record we'll release it in that but you know, steve was like steve's been punching at me for years like, Come on, we gotta do it to dust in the wind. <laughs> is that kind of how uh <laughs> is that kind of how the uh deep purple cover came about it was like i just of- yeah we you know what that's record company i've never been one for cover songs and that yeah, and it's, 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 either, just really. the record, it's the record company 
you know, the, them always wanting to throw something extra out there to sell right. a couple of copies or whatever. But um, I, yeah, I wasn't a fan of that. That's not what I am pictured, you know. So, uh, yeah, but. Well, that's something I always uh, love too. Yeah. Like DS, you're not going to get like a cover song or something like, yeah, you're going to get a, cause you, I mean, it's when bands do do a cover song, they do it well. That's when it's okay. Cool. But not everybody can do a cover song well because it, at, you're, you're up against either just repeating look it. Look at six feet under. <laughs> yeah. I do. I like I said, I, I don't want to be a part of any of that. You know what I mean? Right, so right, I right. was really like doing a video for this record. <laughs> I'm just like anti video because I'm like, we're, we're like a band, like, you know, I'm not comparing us as far as their virtuoso ness there, but I, like rush rush was never a band for like that, that right. orchestrated acting video music video. It yeah. just didn't fit their, it just didn't fit them. And I feel that's the same way the side is, is that a live performance video suits us better than a bunch of people running around fucking slapping each other in the back of the head, you know? So Oh, totally. Exactly. I, it, and it goes a lot back to what you were even saying in the early days, you know, when you're kind of death metal and the genre war of death metal and black metal was kind of essentially going on. And, you know, people are doing their their corpse paint and stuff. And I don't know if it was to that particularly, but you kind of made the, you know, the mention that like, you know, going up there with makeup and or just any sort of costume kind of devalues it. Like you're going up like this is me. And I I'm, mean, dude, listen, listen, listen. How many more fucking bands are going to be running around with Pope hats on? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you think I'm putting a fucking Pope hat on, yeah. you are fucked. And Even I, the fucking Pope don't wear that fucking hat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a very good observation. <laughs> there are a maybe, lot of Pope maybe uh, yarmulkes are the next move. Oh boy, yeah, the satanic looking yarmulke or would say cross adequate. on a yarmulke. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm sure we're gonna get shit for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> There's few bands of the great status that I think are putting out killer music and and excited to see that they're putting out new records and. DSI is definitely one of them. I'm, I'm stoked about it. Well, thank you, sir. Especially yeah, in a band that's been around you. for that long, making a making yeah. relevant records. Still, yeah, yeah, for know. sure. And, well, and, thank and, you. I appreciate it. And everything we've really said about it. So, yeah. And, and so thank you for, for doing that and, and keeping that going for us. And so uh, uh, Overtures of Blasphemy, available now. And definitely a shout out to All About the Rock for making this happen for us, uh, getting us hooked up with Glenn and doing this interview. Uh, link is in the description to pick that up. Done it all for you. So there's no excuses in here in 2018 for you not to be picking up the new Dia side. So definitely check that out. And uh, hopefully we'll be talking to Glenn some of the time again yeah. on Hellcast.